This video will discuss the energetic transitions which form the basis of nuclear magnetic resonance. So we discussed in the previous videos on magnetic moments, how we can get the magnetic dipole of a given nucleus. And so now we're going to calculate what potential energy is associated with that magnetic dipole of a given nucleus. So we can define our potential energy function that the potential energy is equal to the negative dot product of the magnetic dipole with some external magnetic field. So a dot product of two vectors is just multiplying each of the individual components of those vectors and then summing those together. So this would be minus quantity mu x times bx plus mu y times by plus mu z times bz. So multiplying each component of the magnetic dipole with the same component of our mag external magnetic field, summing those and then taking the negative of the result. So next we're going to assume that this magnetic field is only in the z direction. We're going to assume that bx and by are equal to zero. So now our potential energy, when we set these two terms to zero, is going to be equal to negative bz times mu z. And when we go to operators, now our potential energy, our magnetic potential energy operator is going to equal the negative z component of the magnetic field times our magnetic dipole operator in the z direction. So this is going to equal the quantity from our previous video, the magnetogyric ratio, minus gamma times bz times the z component of the angular momentum of our nucleus. So our potential energy operator is equal to minus magnetogyric ratio times uh, z component of our magnetic field times this angular momentum operator. So our Hamiltonian then is going to equal this potential energy operator, or our magnetic Hamiltonian is going to equal that part, minus gamma bz iz. Substituting in the value of the magnetogyric ratio from the previous video, the thing that relates our magnetic dipole and our angular momentum is equal to the negative nuclear factor Gn, which is usually some integer for a specific nucleus, times the charge of the nucleus divided by 2 times the mass of the nucleus times our z component of the external magnetic field times the z component of our angular momentum operator. So now for our wave function, we have h psi equals e psi, the standard Schrodinger equation. So that's going to equal negative gamma bz. And our wave functions here for our nuclei are either going to be the spin up 1 half alpha or spin down minus 1 half beta from our first video on uh, nuclear spin and those operators. So when we operate on our, our spin function, with this z component of the angular momentum operator, we get h bar times the value m sub i, which is either plus or minus 1 half, depending on whether we have spin up alpha or spin down beta. So that gives us minus gamma bz times the eigenvalue h bar mi times the wave function again. So our magnetic energy now for a given nucleus, depending on whether it is spin up or spin down, is that E of plus or minus one half is equal to minus plus one half h bar gamma beta or bz. So if it's alpha, our energy is negative. If it's beta, our energy is positive. And then one half h bar magnetogyric ratio times the z component of the magnetic field. So one thing to notice here is that in the absence of a magnetic field, we don't have any magnetic energy. These two states are equal to one another without a magnetic field. And then the degree to which the energy levels split when there is a magnetic field depends on this magnetogyric ratio, which depends on the charge and mass of the nucleus and this nuclear factor. Okay, so if we graph this here, the alpha state is lower in energy, the beta state is higher, and we have minus one half here and plus one half here in units of h bar gamma bz. So 
what is going to be the energy of transitioning from the lower energy state to the higher energy state. So just as in all spectroscopy, we start at one state, we absorb a photon, and we go to another state. And the energy of the photon that we absorbed is the difference in energy between the two states. So delta E equals Planck's constant times the frequency of that photon, so h nu, which is equal to going to be uh, two, par, 2 pi times h bar nu, because h bar is h over 2 pi. So I'm just saying h nu equals 2 pi h bar nu. So that's going to equal the energy of the plus 1 half state, beta, minus the energy of the initial minus 1 half state, alpha. So that equals 1 half minus negative 1 half times h bar gamma bz. So if we solve this now for our frequency, the frequency at which this nuclear magnetic resonance is going to occur, where we're going to be transitioning between the alpha and beta states of our given nucleus in the presence of a magnetic field, the frequency at which that occurs is going to be 1 over 2 pi gamma, the magnetogyric ratio, times the z component of our magnetic field. And that's going to be in units of hertz, according to this expression. So the frequency, notice, is proportional to, uh, again, our magnetic field in the z direction. It's proportional to our magnetogyric ratio as well. So for a given nucleus, the magnetogyric ratio is fixed. And the only thing, the only thing determining what frequency this magnetic resonance is occurring, this switching in energy levels in the presence of a magnetic field, the only thing that determines what frequency that occurs at is the strength of our magnetic field aligned in the z direction.